It was a warm day in September of 2011 when I was standing right here, preaching the gospel alongside a boombox and someone who had recently trusted in Jesus in my studio. See, about two weeks before this, I had said a prayer to God and I said, Lord, if we can have a building to meet in, that'd be pretty cool. See, prior to this, we were meeting in a home on Sunday, my, my wife and I, and, and striving to be the most biblical church ever, we soon got to taste the reality of what the church really was, and what the gospel looked like when it was lived out. We gathered with about nine people every Sunday with occasional guests. We shared a meal. I preached out of a chapter in the Bible. We prayed and sometimes sang. So I was standing here on that day in September in a big green van did a U-turn right in the middle of the street. We were walking to another location and he signaled me over and he said, hey, do you want to use my building? And in all, I asked him to repeat himself. So a few months later, we were here. That's right, World Renegade Church was officially started February 18th, 2012. The first service we had brought in about 15 people and we'd see trickles of consecutive growth after that. And now after three months, due to definitely foreseen circumstances, we were basically kicked out of the building for the fact that people with hats and Christian hip hop was playing after service. But all in all, very thankful we had a place to launch. Now, there we were, mid-April, with nowhere to go. And at that time, it was such a crucial moment for the church. It was only three months and we already had to leave. Now, you could only imagine the burden that fell upon me to lead this group of growing people. But the comforting thing was the core group of the church had grown so strong in commitment, many agreed to even meet under a tree. So we went on a fast as a church for that week, praying for the favor of God and a location to open up for us. Look to your neighbor and say, don't you wait for a vision. Because the scriptures are already written. Come on now. Amen, somebody. this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ that verse is always shot out as a loose leaf text the partnership in the gospel those that were side by side with him who supported him and, and not just him, but supported what he was doing. What? God sent him. God called him on a mission. Amen? On a mission. He goes on to say that he won't stop working in you until the day of Jesus Christ. And that means that Jesus Christ is returning again. He's letting this church know, listen, God's not done with you in your partnership in the gospel until he returns again for his bride, the church. Fruits don't just appear. Fruits do not just appear. It takes time and it takes a process. This church here, it's going to take time and a process for us to be where God wants us to be. For us to be out of this room. It takes time and a process. But at the end of the day, as we begin to love each other and as we start abounding in love more and more, because I want you to know, although we're reading this in context and it was written to the church at Philippi, it is written to us today because it remains the unchanging word of God so it takes time and a process, but I want that fruit.